Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie, if you are new here. I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com and this channel is all about DIYs, furniture restoration, and thrifting. And today we are going to be working in my small guest bathroom. It's been a adventure to say the least. You always think these small projects are gonna go quickly and then stuff happens. So today we're going to be working on actually installing the sink in this vanity as well as the faucet. And I got in a little something something and I wanted to show you the lights that I picked for in here. We're going from one single light above the vanity to two side sconces. And can I just say that choosing lighting that matches your decor in a room is so hard. I didn't think that it was gonna be this hard to figure to find sconces, but it is really hard to find vintage style. So I found this on Amazon. It was a set of two, look at that. So pretty. And it's obviously not real brass, but it kind of looks like it. What we have to do is install the sink with some silicone caulk and install the faucet with caulk as well. And then I am gonna have to drill the holes in the back of the vanity for the plumbing so that I can plumb it all in and connect it to the wall. And then we're gonna work on the drawers and retrofit those to fit the plumbing underneath. So let's get to all of that. I'm also hoping to get the backsplash accomplished or at least some of it. We got a lot of work to do and two days to get it done in, might I add. Let's get this done. What this basically comes down to is silicone caulk. Let's see if I can get this out here. I, this was a dry fit. I was just basically making sure that this fit on the sink base here and that everything lined up. Now I'm going to actually install this. So I've got a little rubber gasket and a rubber washer here. And then we have these things right here, like this. To do this properly, you need to buy silicone caulk that's meant for kitchens or bathrooms. And we are going to put a bead of silicone around this base. All right, so I've got my bead of silicone around there, and I'm going to place it in the sink. And push down. And then I'm going to take some toilet paper and wipe away the excess silicone around the sides because we do not want to miss. Now, we will place some silicone on the other side of the gasket. I say that questionably because I've never actually done it, but I did read lots of directions. A bead of silicone over here, creating a water barrier. Do you want to tighten it? You don't want to tighten it like super hard because you could break the porcelain and you don't want to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is put a bead of silicone around the edge of this bowl. And make sure that you are positioning the bowl where you're going to want it. This will take 24 hours to completely dry, so you will want to let it be and let it sit for 24 hours before you try running any water through any of it. What we're going to do for the bottom of this, you're gonna to want to put a bead of caulk around the rim of this as well. That is the hardest part of this process. I mean, none of it's really hard, it's just intimidating especially if you've never done it before. Um, actually, the hardest part of this process is probably going to be cutting <laughs> and adjusting these drawers to fit for the plumbing because I want the drawers to be still functional in the bathroom, so I, I don't wanna screw it up like everything. The other part of this job that we still have to do is to 
cut the holes for the plumbing on the back side of this vanity, which I'm gonna do with my jigsaw. So basically what I'm doing is I'm measuring the wall for my pipe placement, 11 inches. So now I wanna see how tall the pipe is. So I measure from the floor and this is 17 and a half. So from that point, 17, I was slightly off, not really slightly, I was pretty off. Drawer stabilizers things is literally right in the way of the main pipe, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, of all the places, <laughs> but it could be. Well, why wouldn't it be in my way? It makes perfect sense. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this out. Everyone makes this process out to be so easy and we all know, we people that are doing this without the expertise know that this is not as simple as it looks. It's never as simple as it looks, so. It's a very ugly hole, but it <laughs> got it out. <laughs> If you had a hole saw and the ability to use one, it'd probably be preferable, yeah. For what I'm doing, this works. I don't have the ability to go out and buy all the tools, even if it would make my life easier. Sometimes you just have to do what you can with what you've got. That's kind of like my life's motto. <laughs> do what you can with what you've got. I kind of liken my home to that, that part in the Winnie the Pooh movie where Pooh gets stuck in Rabbit's house, or rather his bottom half gets stuck in Rabbit's house. And so Rabbit is having to basically deal with Pooh's bottom stuck in his home. And he says, well, if I'm gonna be stuck looking at that thing for months, I might as well make the best of it. <laughs> so that's basically my house. If I'm gonna be stuck looking at this thing for years, I might as well make the best of it. So that's my philosophy here. All right. This is uh, interesting because where I chose to put the hole for the sink does not directly correlate to where the plumbing is. So I just now noticed that. This is why I don't want to work in the bathroom because I think I'm doing good. And then I found out, find out that I have messed something up. I didn't even realize I was messing it up. But I'm sure that the plumbing can accommodate that extra curve oh my gosh guys if you guys are in the middle of any of this stuff i can sympathize with you and if you're wanting to start a project i hope that my ignorance and my mistakes can help you do things better it's probably a good idea to drill the plumbing into the back of the sink or the vanity first and get that lined up before you drill your hole for your sink so that you know that your sink plumbing is coming directly down to the plumbed plumbing, the stuff that's already in the wall that is not easy to move. <laughs> I'm not gonna move it, no, no, no. We'll just have to figure out how to run the plumbing to where it'll work there. It's just one more annoyance. All right, so we're forging ahead and trying to figure out this drawer situation. Basically what I'm doing is I am measuring the depth this way from when the pipes start. So I gave this one seven inches of leeway, but I gave it an extra inch just in case for other plumbing, because I'm not sure how thick the, the rest of the plumbing that's gonna connect to this will be. So I gave it another inch. So from this, I did six inches. And then from here, until it gets around to the pipe, I gave it about an inch leeway also. So I did this one at 15. And since it's directly in the center, this one is at 15 as well. And then I did the same thing for this. I measured how far back these go before they touch the sink faucet, water lines basically. So that was 12 inches. So from this, I have 15, 15 inches of width and 12 inches of depth. This drawer can go all the way back because there's nothing there. 
So I hope that made a little bit of sense. So, so I'm basically mapping out exactly where I'm going to want to cut these drawers with my table saw or miter saw or you can use a circular saw. Probably even a jigsaw if you wanted to, but my jigsaw makes a really rough cut so I'm not going to use that. This bottom drawer is going to be the interesting one because I'm not entirely sure about this plumbing situation here. So I'm probably going to cut it wider less it's going to have less space basically because i'm going to have to cut it from here until a little bit of leeway where the plumbing meets the wall here and give plenty of leeway so i'm probably going to give myself um maybe six inches there more like 10 inches probably so five inches on either side of this sink plumbing and if I have to adjust it further from there I'll do that but I don't want to lose too much drawer space on the bottom. Okay we're dry fitting this before I fill in all the holes just to make sure that it works. Works great. Yay something's working. All right now to build the rest of this drawer like that. Let's go outside. I think every battery is dying right now. The work that I got done today was I got the water lines hooked up, which bad news is that the one that was leaking that my dad tightened, the valve is actually failing. So when I turn the hot water valve on, it leaks from the actual valve itself. So that will need to be replaced, so it's not actually fixed. So it's all right, we didn't make it. <laughs> any further with the plumbing or the electrical but I was able to retrofit the drawers and you got to watch that process. It's basically just one piece of wood at a time. I went and measured very detailed inside of the base of the cabinet and gave myself a lot of leeway for the plumbing but I tried to also make use of as much of the drawer as I possibly could because I didn't want to lose a ton of the storage space. And then I went ahead and mapped out where I'm going to be putting my mirror and the lights. So these lights are four and a half inches and they're going to be right here on the wall next to the mirror. It's going to look so pretty. I'm excited to see it all done. And I do believe I am planning on ship lapping this entire backsplash, but better than what it was before. I'm going to do a mirror image of the ship lap that's on the wall over here behind the door. That's all I have for an update for now, guys. I hope the next video will be installing the lights, putting up the ship lap, and getting the plumbing completely finished. I really want to get this bathroom finished up because I have so much more left to do. There are more furniture projects on the way. I'm already starting the next one, which is one of my daughter's bedroom pieces of furniture. It is a small child size antique wardrobe, and I'm excited to get started on that. So if you're interested in content like that, stay tuned. And if you like this content, make sure to like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you are not. I would love it if you would be a part of this community here at Capturing Wonderland. And share this video with any friends you think would enjoy this content as well. But thank you so much, guys, for being here with me. I really appreciate your support. I couldn't do this channel without you. It is a lot of hard work, and 
honestly, having you guys here watching my stuff motivates me to keep moving forward because otherwise there are some days where I feel like I would crawl into a corner and just not move because it's really overwhelming and I feel... I mean, I'm a competent person, but this is all stuff that is completely out of my comfort zone. So it makes me feel extremely incompetent when I do projects like this, believe it or not. So I really appreciate you being here. It helps drive me forward, bring you along with me on my journey and we can do it together. So thank you so much for being here. I cannot wait to talk to you again. Bye.